Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and I'm really excited to show you my new YouTube camcorder. So this is the Sony Handycam FDR AX100 in 4K. So this is the camera that kind of stole the show at CES this year. It's the first camcorder to bring 4K down to the kind of prosumer level. Uh, this is a $2,000 camera, so it's still kind of expensive, but certainly not as expensive as a RED camera, and certainly better than something like a 4K camera in a cell phone. So it's kind of nice to see, finally, this camcorder show up. I've actually been waiting for this for quite a while before upgrading to uh, upgrading my gear, because I wanted to do 4K eventually, and I just wanted to wait until a higher or a, a more attainable camera came along for my production. I really like Sony Handycams. That's what I use for my video recording, so this was the perfect product for me. I'm pretty excited to finally get it. So there are a lot of specs here to take a look at, so let's get through it. So we do have Wi-Fi in here, primarily for controlling your uh, camcorder uh, using an iPhone or something like that. We do have NFC technology, uh, so this can use NFC on the phone, particularly an Android phone because there are apps for Android for controlling your Sony camcorder. So you can transfer files using NFC from the camcorder to your phone. You can also use the remote control apps that are available on Android or uh, iPhone. Uh, we do have Carl Zeiss Optics, we have Bind ZX, so we do have 120 frames per second processing in here for slow motion. We have Exmor R, CMOS sensor, a 1 inch 20 megapixel sensor, so fairly large sensor, 20 megapixels for still image recording and 14 for video. We have Triluminous LCD display, Play Memories, which is Sony software for managing this content. We have 4K video recording as well as 1080p, so you can record in 1080p if you don't want to use 4K because of course 4K is a really high bit rate, so it takes up a lot of space. HDMI, we have Dolby 5.1 available on this, so you can record in 5.1 surround. AVC HD Progressive, so we do have standard 1080p uh, AVC HD, so if you want to use that, you can, but we also have XAVCS, which is the format used to record in 4K or 1080p. Uh, this is a higher quality uh, codec. We also have uh, the Sony Hot Shoe. This is the NI Multi-Interface Shoe, uh, which is kind of hidden on the camera, and I'll show you that. Now, this supports SDXC Class 10 cards, which is what you're going to need for 4K. So, I was actually pleased to find out that this card actually works in this camcorder. This is a uh, standard Class 10 card, 80 megs. These aren't too expensive, so you can pick these up pretty cheaply. Uh, there are faster cards out there that are more expensive that go up to 250 megs, I think, now. Uh, and those are called Class 3 cards or U3 cards as well. All right, so let's unbox this and take a look at the contents. All right, the first thing we get is our literature. So we have our limited warranty, uh, consumer warranty, accessories. So there's lots of accessories for that NI interface shoe, multi-interface shoe, including uh, wireless microphones, um, the directional microphones, that sort of thing, as well as tripods and cases. Sony Movie Studio Platinum, which is editing software you could use. I just use Final Cut Pro. Uh, this is for Canadian consumers. Now we also have a pamphlet for US consumers. Encourage you to register your device and get 15% off Sony accessories. And we have our two manuals, very skimpy manuals in multiple languages. All right, so let's just lift the lid here if I can get it off. There we go. All right, so there is the camera itself, which is quite big. In fact, before I take it out, you can see just how much bigger it is compared to the camcorder I normally use for my videos. Uh, so here we have, looks like the lens hood. So you do include a lens hood. As you can see, they also give you this little orientation point for lining up the lens hood with the lens. And we're gonna take a look at that, of course. Looks like we have our large battery. I'm actually not sure how big this battery is. They call these the infolithium battery. Uh, so this looks like just like the extended battery packs you can buy for any Sony Handycam. In fact, if I connect it to my old Handycam, you can see it actually fits just fine. All right. Now, according to this, this is 1,960 milliamp hours. All right, so the next thing we have is our power cable, I assume, for connecting the power adapter, which should be at the bottom here. Looks like a HDMI to micro HDMI cable they've included, so that's kind of nice. We have a USB extender, and then we should have our power brick here. So there it is. I'm familiar with these because I've had so many Sony Handycams. It's pretty much the same power brick you get with those as well. So you can use this for powering your camera or just charging the battery. And of course, you do have USB built into this camcorder, so you can charge it that way as well. Now, also in the bottom of the box is the remote control they've included. So as you can see, you have record, 
uh, folk, uh, zoom in and out, pause, play, skip ahead, so for playback purposes, of course. So all of that's available here, your display, and you have a little battery protector here, so you just pull that out to activate your remote. All right, so let's get to the beast itself. There it is, 4K, first thing I see, a nice chrome 4K logo, really nice, really hefty camcorder, especially for use to the small portable Sony Handycams. All right, so let's take a close look around. So you do have an eyepiece here, including a proximity sensor. So if you pull this out and you uh, place this close to your eye, this will activate the OLED display that's in here. Back here we have our battery pack. So if you look here, you can see we have a pretty large space for our battery pack. This will, of course, support a variety of sizes. So you pop that in. There you go. You can see it sticks out a bit. Also add some weight to it. We have our record button for standby as well as record. We have our shutter release or our mode. We can change between camera mode and video mode. We have our power LED indicator. We have our photo camera or shutter release for taking a photo. You can take a photo anytime you're recording video, just hit that shutter release. We have our zoom control as well. We have that NI hot shoe, so it pops off. It's actually spring loaded, I think. There we go. So there you can pop in an accessory snaps on. Very nice. You can see it's got that nice texture to it. It's got that high quality camera texture. Also along the side it's got this kind of full leather texture. Feels really nice in the hand. Uh, you also have your charging port down here for AC in for charging your camcorder. We have our hand strap with Velcro. This allows you to tighten it up as you want. It also has your integrated USB port. I believe this is just USB 2.0 but you also use this for charging as well. So you don't have to carry around a charger if you don't want to. And it kind of plugs into the hand strap there. Well, you've seen this before with other Sony handy cams. We also have our focus magnifier, 8x clear image zoom. So we have full optical zoom there. We have NFC technology. This is the NFC area for uh, tapping to your phone. SDXC as well as Memory Stick Pro. We have Xmore R branding, optical steady shot. So we have both optical image stabilization as well as software stab stabilization, and we have Wi-Fi built in. Carl Zeiss Optics, we have that 5.1 channel surround microphone built in right there. We have our zoom control, zoom and focus. We have autofocus and manual focus, you can enable with that switch. You have your manual controls here for controlling your aperture or iris, your gain or ISO, and your shutter speed. Now along the front we have these doors here for microphone input. You also have this multi-input for it's kind of a proprietary connector for connecting something other than micro HDMI to your camera, so you can use other connectors. On the other side, you have these ports for HDMI. They've included a cable for you. This is micro HDMI out. And then you have your headphone jack. Now along the bottom we have our battery release, which is kind of an unfortunate location for it because if you have this mounted on a tripod, it's going to be hard to exchange the batteries. And then we also have our mount for the tripods as well. Along the front we have our IR or infrared blaster for night mode. It's also your IR receiver for the remote control. Now along the front we have our Sony lens cap. Behind it is our fairly large lens with our, as you can see, anti-glare properties. We do have a manual focus ring as well. And of course you can see all of the specs here for that lens. Carl Zeiss Optics. And let's go ahead and take a look at the screen. This is a 3.5 inch LCD touch screen automatically turns on when you flip it open. If you're used to Sony Handycams, this is pretty much the same interface. It's the same interface I've seen for years now, so I'm surprised it hasn't changed much at all. So here we have the controls on the inside. So we have our program auto exposure, our night shot mode, so there is infrared night shot in here. Uh, you can turn off the display. You can also power it on and off. We have our speaker built in right there. Uh, we also have our playback, so if you want to play back your media, you just hit that button, it takes you right to the playback. And then we have something called My Voice Cancellation, so you can cancel out your voice by hitting this button. In fact, uh, if you press it, you'll see it pop up on the screen. You can see we also have audio monitoring here in 5.1 or 2 channel if you prefer uh, just standard stereo. Now like all Sony Handycams, you pop off the display, you can rotate it around and it will flip the display for you automatically. So you can face the user, or you can move it sideways and monitor it from the side of the camera. Now just to show you the SD card slot, I have one installed here. I can pull that out. As you can see, it's spring-loaded, and when you install it, you get a little read status light right there, indicating that success successfully connected and that it's reading and writing to it. 
Now on the back you have your ND filter, so you have step one, two, and three for reducing brightness in the shot. We also have auto and manual mode. Now as I mentioned, you have these manual controls down here. So if you want to manually control these, all you have to do is press on any one of them and use this little dialer at the front to change it. So for example, I'm changing my aperture. If you look at the reading right now, you can see it's manually changing with that dial. Same with your kind of sensitivity as well and your uh, shutter speed. Now we also have the eyepiece, which you activate by pulling in and out. So as you can see, turns off, turns on. Now that display isn't on, again, that's an OLED display. It's not on until you actually approach it or place something in front of that sensor right there. So for example, if you go really close here, there you go, you can see. As you can see inside, you can see all those controls you would normally see on that uh, touch display. Now the eyepiece also has this manual control for the diopter. In fact, if you look at the eyepiece, you can see it moving in and out. Now just to show you how to install the lens hood, you just line up the red dots, one on the camera, run on the lens hood. Just line them up and twist them into place. And there you go. And in case you're wondering, the lens cap does work with the lens hood on. And of course, if you want to take it off, just twist it and take it off. Now just to give you some idea of the size difference between this and one of the handy cams I've been using for my videos, as you can see it's just microscopic by comparison, but it's funny because they look very similar and they work similarly. I mean they have the same software and many of the same features. This of course just has a lot more of it. This also has internal storage while this does not. This relies entirely on the SD cards or uh, memory pro cards you uh, install. Now just to give you a brief overview of the user interface starting off with the main screen. So we have our shooting modes. Generally I just shoot in movie. You also have photo mode, slow motion recording, golf shot, and high speed recording. Now these differ depending on what resolution you're shooting at. So for example, and if you're shooting in 4K, these are not available to you. Uh, so right now I guess I'm in 1080p or either XAVC-S 1080p or AVC HD. And I'll show you how to change that. So we have our camera and mic. So here you can change your white balance, spot metering focus. I actually use, let's see, I use this a lot, exposure control. So I prevent the camera from automatically adjusting my exposure. So you can do manual settings. You can see with this camera, you get nice readout of exactly your values. Uh, so you can use auto or manual mode. So we have focus, AGC limit, auto exposure shift. So we have manual settings for low lux, scene selection, picture effects, cinema tone, steady shot, digital zoom, and as you can see, some features are, are grayed out if you're if it's not available for the specific camera setting. Dial settings, night shot, light, face detection, smile shutter, smile sensitivity, uh, flash. There's no flash on this right now. Then we have our audio. So we have my voice canceling, which is that little uh, feature that you can toggle on and off directly on the camera itself. Built-in zoom. So you do have mic zoom. Auto wind noise reduction. Audio mode. So we have 5.1 channel surround. You can change that. Then we have audio recording level, which you can set to auto. If you select these, you can see you have more things. You can do manual settings as well. And you can see exactly what you got. So our next category is shooting assist. So we have control with smartphone, which you can enable, my button, grid line, zebra, camera data display, audio level display, and I think that's it. So you can see as you cycle through those, they go through the various categories that are available to you. So you can go all the way up to manual, and you can also tap on any one of these just to jump right to them. Now under image quality and size, we can change our settings here. So right now I am in AVC HD. So if I wanna change that to XAVC S4K, that will also change the settings that are available to me. So right now, let me just show you that when you're in 1080p uh, AVC HD, you can change your recording mode from highest quality to standard to long play, kind of the old VCR uh, memories there. Uh, but you get the idea here. You have frame rate, which you can change. So under 1080p, you do have up to 60 frames per second progressive or interlacing or 24p. Now when you're in 4K, you're limited to 30 or 24. Uh, we have dual video recording, simultaneously records movies for sharing, so if you want a smaller uh, quality image for sharing, you can enable that. I, I don't need that, so I keep it off. And I can also change your image size, which right now is limited to 14.2. And if we go to XAVCS 4K, click OK. Again, it changes your menu selections. Okay, let's go back to menu, image quality. And again, frame rate, the only thing that's available is 30 frames and 24 frames. Uh, we have dual video recording, which is also available in here. Uh, image size, so if you go here, you now have 20 megapixels as well. All right, so that gives you an idea of some of the settings that are available. We also have playback functions, uh, so you can do event viewer for taking a look at uh, the media you've recorded previously, 
edit and copy. So you can send it to a smartphone, again, via Wi-Fi or NFC. View on TV, so you can push it to your TV, such as a Sony Bravia TV. Now under Setup, we'll find Media Info, which will tell us about our memory card that's currently installed. Actually, how much time we have left in the current format, 4K. So you can see 2 hours and 11 minutes, which sounds like a stretch to me. We can also format the card directly from the camera. You can repair the image database of the memory card. You can change the file numbering scheme here from series, uh, or you can reset it. We also have the data code, which you can toggle on and off. So you have date and time or camera data, if you want to put that on your video. We also have download music, so you can download music to your camera. Let's go back to menu here, setup. We have empty music, so you can delete music as well. We have WPS push for connecting to a Wi-Fi access point, access point settings. So this is where you can actually uh, connect to your wireless access point. So if I see mine here, time capsule, I could do that right here by inputting the password. We can also edit the device's name. So I'm just gonna leave that the default. We also have display MAC address so we can see our MAC address of the device. Uh, we have SSID and password reset, network info reset, TV types, so you can change that here. Hopefully you're not using four by three. HDMI resolution. You can change that to auto, either 1080p, 1080i, or even 4K, if you have 4K TV. And then we have uh, USB connect settings, USB power supply, and a bunch of other things. So there you go, you get the idea of the basic user interface. And we also have our file explorer, so you can see all the things that we've downloaded. It's kind of interesting, it looks like some files that are still on my SD card here. But I recorded a 4K video earlier, just as a test, so you can play that back. And you can delete it if you want, you can skip ahead, pause it that sort of thing. Now in terms of the recording screen, we do have our menu to get back to our menu controls. And as you can see, when you snap back to the recording screen, you get a flash of all the information that's available. But of course, you can bring it back just by hitting the display button along the side of the camera. It kind of cycles through it for you. Uh, you can control your zoom on the display itself, like so. So you can use this or the uh, physical control on the camera. And of course, you can also hide this if you don't want it in your way. And then let's get back to the standard controls here. So we have our record button as well for recording. And as you can see, we have live monitoring here along with our audio monitoring, which is very helpful. And as you can see, we're in auto mode, so it will automatically adjust for you depending on the shot. Now, if you don't want to hear yourself talking in your videos, you can enable this and this will kind of minimize the voice of the person recording the video and emphasize the voice of the people in front of the camera. Now we can also use this as a still camera just by tapping the shutter release. Now we have this multi-use ring, so we can use it for zooming or for focusing. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how this works in real life. Now right now I have it set for zooming and it's not instantaneous, it's not a physical connection to the lens mechanism itself, it's really just using, it's like using a button, but it's kind of like a jog dial. So you get a little more precise control and speed over it. Now let me switch to focus mode and hit the manual focus control here. So now if I use the dial, I can now manually focus the image. And as you can see, it's actually really smooth. So uh, combined with stabilization, you can actually get some really smooth uh, uh, focus shots uh, with this camera. Now, just to show you how NFC technology works, here I have my Nexus 5, sending me some notifications here, uh, which has NFC technology built in. And as you can see, the NFC uh, receiver is right here. So if you tap it, you get a little notification tone that will take you right to the Play Store to download the app. So we have the Play Memories mobile app. So let's go ahead and install that. Now once I've logged into Wi-Fi on my camera and installed the app on the smartphone, I can now tap the phone to the camera, automatically launches the app, and now I can control my camera directly from my smartphone completely wirelessly. So as you can see, as I move the camera around, it's updating live on my phone. There is some lag here and there, but surprisingly smooth. So I can record video. And I can zoom in and out using the touch screen on my phone. And I can stop it. Now I can also change to still mode. And I can snap a photo. And this actually allows me to snap photos from my camera and save them to my phone. So actually this image is saved not only on the camera, but also on my phone. 
so if we go back here, we we'll actually went to the gallery. There we go. We have our settings, and you can adjust this under settings, so you can enable this or not. So I have under save options, I've turned that on. That's actually on by default, but you can turn it off. All right, guys. So that is my unboxing and first look at the Sony FDR AX100 4K camcorder. I will be posting a 4K demo reel just to show you an idea of what the 4K performance looks like. So stay tuned for that. And until then, see you in the next video.